Cotton wool is an integral part of our society. I say this because when you go through the streets of any city in the world, you will see what you you will see cotton wool used in almost all the buildings, be it modern or even a lot of classical buildings had cotton wool used on them. So people working with Revit 2022 or even Revit of prior versions, they need to be working with cutting walls. Not only working with cutting walls, they need to be very professional about it. All right. Inside Revit, there are a lot of steps, you know, tips and tricks on how to use cutting walls. Okay. That is what we are going to be talking about in today's tutorial. All right. So we're going to be talking about cutting walls in today's tutorial. So if there is something you'd like to learn, please stick around. Don't go nowhere. We'll discuss that after this quick break. Welcome back to Simple or Difficult. My name is Ono Chechukwode and I'll be your instructor for today's tutorial. Follow me, let's jump into Revit. So I will show you the types of cutting words we have readily available for us in the current template that we are using. Okay, for you to be able to access the cutting word tool, first of all, you have to make sure that you are in the architecture tab and then you select the word tool okay because it is a wall okay the custom wall is also a wall so you select the wall too on the drop down menu this is where we usually you know select on the type selector on the properties palette where we usually select the type of wall we want you go down till you get to the section of the cutting walls okay so you see the three types that we are going to talk about right now. You see the cutting wall, you are going to see the exterior glazing, and then you are going to see the storefront. All right, we are going to discuss the differences between these three cutting walls. Okay, so the, the first one you are going to see is the cutting wall. It is just like a plain piece of glass. Okay, there are no divisions, there are no nothing, just glass. All right. So I wouldn't advise you to use this one if you want to do anything that is curved because it's not going to curve, okay? Because it's just a, you know, when you get a very big plane of glass, okay? You cannot bend it because it is, glass doesn't bend. So we have the exterior glazing. The exterior glazing has divisions. However, it does not have money. Let's, let me take you to the 3D view so you will see what I am talking about, okay? You will see there are demarcations, there are grids here, there are cutting grids here, okay? We will talk more on that later. There are cutting grids here, but when you when I zoom in close enough, you see that they are just, you know, separate glasses without anything joining them, okay? This is not possible in real life, okay? There has to be something holding these two glasses in place, but in Revit, it is possible. So this has no mullion, okay? It is the exterior glazing. So when you want to use this exterior glazing, you have to go and edit the type parameter, ensure that you add mullion to, to it. But the way it comes by default, it has no mullion, okay? So the other one, the other option that we have in there is the store front, okay? The storefront has a glass and also it has uh, what we call the mullion. Okay, so if I take you to the 3D view, you might have seen a glimpse of it when I was showing you the other one. When I take you to the 3D view, you will see these, uh, these, excuse me, these are the mullions. Okay, uh, if you cannot select the, 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 the cotton panels, all you need to do is, is tab okay now we have selected it then that is the cutting panels okay now the next thing i want us to talk about quickly is the um, the instance parameters and the type parameters of the cutting panel almost all the elements walls have it you know the doors have it there are things that you what, what what are the instance parameters and the type parameters and how they are, I, I, I realize that we haven't talked much about that Okay. The instance parameters are the parameters that you can change and it will affect only one instance, you know, of a family. Okay. Assuming I have a lot of, 
with this family over the project. Let's say I copy, let me go over to the start realization so that you can see what I'm doing. Let's say I copy this over here. Okay. Now we have two. Now we have two of this storefront cutting one. Okay. So if I should select it here and I come over here and I make any changes here, it is going to affect only this cutting wall, which means I have I've adjusted an instance of this family. So, which means what I adjusted is an instance parameter. Let me show you what I mean by that. Let's say I decide to change this, you know, the the height, the top constraint to the first floor. Okay, you realize that the, this this change only uh, only affects this cutting wall and does not affect this one. Let me take it back to the roof. Okay, to the root level. Okay, it is back there. Now let's say I want to offset. Okay, this offset, you notice that we have the vertical grid here and we have the horizontal grid here. Okay, then the justification beginning, the beginning, you know, in cutting grid, the beginning for the vertical grid starts from the left and then goes towards the right. All right, and then the, the horizontal grid starts from bottom and then goes towards the top. So if I should tell the, the if I should give Revit instruction that I want the cutting this cutting um, this cutting wall to offset the mullion because this is vertical grid which control it controls the mullion to offset the mullion and I, I should add like let's say 120 let me just use 1200 millimeters okay and I hit apply as you can see let me dimension it so that you understand what has happened okay you can see right you can see so if i should give it an instruction to to make it 1000 which is one meter you will see what has happened well let's go ahead and dimension this one to see whether this change i've added here affected this one too you can see it didn't affect it which means all i have changed here are the instance parameter of this cutting wall not the type parameter I will show you we'll be working with that parameter very soon okay so let me go ahead and dimension this because i want to also show you the offset parameter for the horizontal grid okay so when i come over here and i say okay i want to offset this thing one two from remember i told you that the horizontal grid starts beginning start from bottom and then goes towards the top so if I should if I should say okay I want to offset it by 1002 you see 1000 here I can invert this thing that is why we have the justification the justification you can drop it down you can make it to start from the end okay so it will now start from the top instead because the the the, the beginning is the bottom and the end is the top so if you want it, the, if you want the justification that's the offset to start from the and you can also do that through this justification parameter over here so i know you must have been wondering what does this angle do so now we can tilt the angle of the vertical grid or the horizontal grid by any degree that we want okay we can make it 75 degree once we hit apply this are instance parameter okay it is asking me to remove the dimensions because it cannot you understand so these are instance parameters. you can see this one remains unaffected okay it remains unaffected so you can tilt this one too to 75 degrees sorry let me select this 75 degrees and you hit apply okay remove the reference that's the dimension line you can see okay so all these things you can do to an instance of an element in Revit. Okay, so now let me, I want to clear everything. So we can just quickly go ahead and I'll show you what type parameters are. So let me go over to the edit type so we can really get down to what it is that are type parameters. As far as cutting walls are concerned, so we hit the edit type. Now we're inside here. Okay, 
Now let's talk about the vertical grid and the horizontal grid. You know, we just did it here as um instance parameter. Now let's look at them as type parameters. Okay. So the vertical grid layout that we have here, we have a quite number of them. If I click this thing and drop them down, you will you notice we have fixed distance, we have fixed number, we have maximum spacing and we have minimum spacing. I'm going to be explaining this thing in a jiffy. Okay, what they are and um, when to use them. The first one, fixed distance. Fixed distance, like the name suggests, when you, you are using this fixed distance, it means that whatever number you put here in the spacing is the exact number you are going to get in your, you know, cutting grids, okay? It's not, it, if, you, if I should put 1,000 here, the, it, mind you, this is the vertical. If I should put 1,000 here, and if I should apply it, just be looking at what happens here. You see, we have 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, okay? And the same applies to this. This is why I say, okay, this, yeah, this is a type parameter. When I'm changing, when I'm making changes here, it is affecting all the instances, okay? It is affecting all the instances of cotton wool that are of the same family, of the same type. You know, if I have that 5,000 number of this cotton wool in a project and I'm making any change inside this place, it is going to affect all of them. The same applies for the horizontal grids. Okay, so the next one we have there is fixed numbers. Okay, these fixed numbers, when you set it here, you will have to come out over here. You know, before when we were talking about, as you can see, right now it is still grayed out. Okay, when we are talking in this instance parameter area, okay, the number at the top was grayed out. We could not access it. Okay, we we're only able to access the justification, the angle, and the offset. Okay, now, but when you come here and you turn on the fixed number for the vertical, mind you, we're turning it on for the vertical. Okay, and then we hit OK. Just be watching, looking at, be looking at this place, you'll see what's going to happen there. Now, you see, this one is no longer grayed out. This one is still grayed because I did not change it for the horizontal grid so if i should come over here and i should you know you know let's say i add six okay and i hit apply okay you see now it is six now you don't add the external borders of the cotton walls okay the six that he's talking about are the vertical grids in in between okay you have one two three four five six that's six vertical grids okay if i should add make it three you can see one two three all right so you can use this to set your cutting walls however you want okay that is that for fixed numbers you can do that mind you whatever i'm saying let's go back inside here whatever i'm saying for the vertical grid also applies so very much for the horizontal grid okay maximum spacing Okay, maximum spacing works when you are not really sure the, the number, the, the distances you want apart, but you know that you don't want the distances between your mullions to be over a certain distance. Let's say you have a five meter distance that you want to fit cutting walls into. All right, so and um, you don't want the cutting walls to, you want to ensure that the cutting walls does not get up to one meters apart. Okay, so you can just come into this the spacing and impute your one meter and then hit okay. All right, now as you can see, all right, let me just quickly edit the next time. You can see none of these cutting walls are up to one, one meters. Okay, the highest they go to was eight, eight, you know, eight, 850 millimeters. Okay, so that is that for that. So the next one we're going to, sorry. The next one we're going to look at, I think that is the last one, which is the minimum space. Oh, sorry, I'm editing the other one. Let's go over here. Okay, I think this one was in fixed distance before. <clears throat> and then the minimum spacing, this is like the opposite of the maximum spacing, okay? In the minimum spacing, now you're telling Revit that the minimum, like that you want these mullions to be, is 1000. So Revit tries to, you know, give you a buffer away from that 1000. As you can see now, the, the mullions here are all 
1020 okay that is you know giving you like a, a sort of buffer from the 1000 that you mentioned let's hit okay all right let's go back to our project let's go over there and we're going to add cutting wall the storefront cutting wall to them i'm going to show you you know the way to cut the walls to fit it into the walls and then you can embed them into you know the walls okay all right so let's go over to our ground floor plan let's go over to the project browser and double click it so we can get to it all right so we are here now all right select because i've selected it before it is still going to be what is going to be selected in my options okay let's go into the type parameters and edit it all right so we are having what we have here we have a fixed distance already at 900 okay let's leave this horizontal grid for now okay and let's hit okay so now we are going to first of all we are going to embed it into this wall okay but for you to do that you have to first of all ensure that automatically embed is checked on okay if it is off it is not going to embed okay let me just show you how, what it's going to do it is going to do something like this okay they're already giving you error you see it's not embedding to the wall so you have to ensure that it is checked like so so when you, it is checked and you hit okay you now see what happens okay you can see it is embedded nicely into the wall okay let's quickly adjust this thing and make it 1000 okay fish distance of 1000 okay so it will fit into this space correctly okay as you can see all right now let's also do the same thing for the cutting wall over here okay so let's create similar you select you right click and then you come down here and click on create similar okay you will see the grid lines over here you select it do the same thing here you select it okay all right so let's go over to the 3d view and we'll see what we have done so let me just quickly delete this thing i'm done with that okay these are the cutting walls that we just added we still need to do something to them now we're going to work with the instance parameters okay so you select it and then the base offsets will add 600 to it and then hit apply now we're going to set the top constraint to unconnected and then now we can set the unconnected height we will set it to select this one and do exactly the same thing we did for this one okay now i want to show us something okay so we come over here you go over to the modify tab and then grab your split tool okay so now let's split this wall okay and then here too okay okay let's grab the align tool to align the okay so now when you go back to the 3d you see the effect of what we just did please whenever it asks you to save please ensure that you save so when you come over here see what we have done you have created an opening <laughs> okay on this wall surface so the first thing we need to do is we need to add the beam uh, above here and then also add a floor that will come from the ngl up to the ground floor so let's go quickly do that we'll come over here and then we'll select our wall tool and then we'll set the base constraint to ngl the top constraint we'll set it to ground floor okay so now we'll come over here and we'll draw all right so when you go back, go back to the oh sorry on the type selector let's select the uh, 230 
on the time selector, I want, I need you to realize something. Instead of me going around inside here to find the 230 exterior wall, you can see most recently used types. Okay, you will see the cutting walls I've been using here, and then you see the walls we have been using. Okay, so if I click on this one, it is going to select it, and then you are going to see it underneath here. All right, so you can see what I just added. Okay, and then we are going to add another one above here. So on the first floor, I'm going to grab the wall too, and then now. I'm going to go over here and select the wall that I want to use. But before I do that, I will set the constraint. Now, the base constraint is going to be the ceiling level, while the top constraint is going to be the roof level. All right. So now, all right. So when I go over to the 3D view, we are seeing it. So you select it and attach top or base. All right let's go over to the ground floor and draw our cutting walls let's just add the cutting walls okay so now let's set the base on the ground floor and then the top constraint we are going to set it to the ceiling level all right so we are going to draw it like so okay yeah so let's go over to the 3d you can see what we have done now we had a door here before that that is no longer there because when we split the wall and we deleted the wall the door unfortunately went with it now we need to add that door back okay but now we need to add it to this cutting wall the way we put doors into cutting walls is quite different from the way we place these doors and the story as well we place doors if you have not seen that tutorial please check it up here to fit a door here you have to select the panel you know unpin it and then replace it with a door okay so now let's do that let's go over to the 3d view so that we we'll understand it properly okay when you hover around you are going to you see that you this is the modem okay when you hover around this is the cutting wall so now i want to select only this part so what i do is you you go over there and you hit the tab button Okay, you hit it as much as possible and you see now it is highlighted, you click on it and then you unpin it. Now there is no door family loaded into this place. What we are going to do is we are going to load it in. These cutting wall doors that I'm about to load in, you can always get them. The links are in the descriptions. Okay, so now when we tab and tab and we select it, we have unpinned it before. So we come over here. You will see it over here okay this is a cotton wall door all right so when we go to the ground floor plan you can see we have a cotton wall door there the same way we added this door we can also add windows we can also add some solid you know we can even add an empty panel there in that case you will have only mullion you will not have anything in between okay for now you know as a beginner these are the things i feel you should know to be able to effectively put cutting walls you know in your building okay please let me know in the comment section below whether you want me to do a full you know tutorial section on cutting walls where we discuss cutting walls because there are a lot of things to be discussed a lot of things to be talked about you know on cutting walls okay all right so that is it for this tutorial i hope you enjoyed it if you did please um, ensure to give us a like okay if you're a first timer please consider subscribing if you haven't done so not only subscribing also ring that bell so you get notified each time we drop a new video we release videos just like this one every week okay all right so thank you very much for watching i will see you in my next video